Hi, I'm John the Engineer Turmel, and tonight I'm going to participate in the saddleback debate between Barack Obama and John McCain, their first debate. There's a chance there's going to be a North American Union, and if ever there were, I'd be running for President or Prime Minister of that Union, so I may as well take this opportunity to explain what I could do for not only Canada, but the United States and the world as well. So I'm going to be throwing in my answers and one-liners to these uh, arguments made by the other candidates, and I hope you appreciate the errors they're making and the ways they could be fixed. As an American, what's worth dying for? What's worth having sacrificing American lives for? Well, uh, obviously, American freedom. So when was America's freedom ever in jeopardy? It's always been America attacking other nations, never other nations attacking America. Mm -hmm. uh, American lives, America's national, in national interests. Uh, you know, I was just uh, with my family on vacation in Hawaii and visited uh, the place where my grandfather uh, is laid to rest, mm. uh, the Punchbowl National Punch Cemetery, yeah. uh, and then went out to the Arizona, uh, a, a, out in Pearl Harbor, and you know you're reminded of, of the sacrifice that had been made on behalf of our freedom. Yes, the sacrifice those men made, giving their lives when Roosevelt knew the Japanese were going to attack, and he let them be killed so he'd have an excuse to get America into the Second World War. What a sacrifice they made. And I think that is a solemn obligation that we all have. Uh, I think we also have uh, forged alliances uh, with countries, uh, NATO being a prime example, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, we have pledged to act militarily uh, for the common defense. Uh, that is in our national interest, and that is something I think that we have to abide by. Military alliances? That's the worst excuse for going to war and sacrificing your kids. American, what is worth dying for and what's worth committing American lives for? Freedom. Um, our national security, our security as a nation. Wars have started in obscure places that have enveloped us. Wars have started in obscure places that have enveloped the United States? Not true. If you go back and look at history, the United States foments strife all over the planet. You got the most disgusting record of warmongering in the history of the planet. So we've been watching. You can't hide it from the victims and the people who know what you did. You guys run the death squads throughout all of Latin America. You know, Asia, Iraq. You know, it's terrible the stuff you've done. You should be ashamed. We also must temper that with the ability to effectively and beneficially cause the outcome that we want. You know? That's the problem. Your insistence on causing the outcome that you want that's beneficial to you and not the countries you're in. Now, what uh, about, what about now, you know, you're seeing a yeah. Russia reassert itself um, in, in Georgia and maybe now Poland. Russia reassert itself in Georgia? That's a distortion of what happened. I think the preacher has his facts wrong. What's happening? I'm very saddened uh, here to be with you and talk about uh, a Russian reemergence in the centuries-old ambition of the Russian Empire to dominate that part of the world. Ah, accusing Russia of being the villain of the peace. We'll see. Killings, murder, villages are being burned. People are being wantonly ejected from their homes. The latest figures from human rights organizations, 118,000 people in that small country. I bet a hundred bucks Russia didn't do that. I think he's lying. It was one of the earliest Christian nations. The king of then Georgia in the third century converted yeah. to Christianity. You go to Georgia and you see these old churches that go back to the fourth and fifth century. Oh, the Georgians are so nice. My friends, the president, the president, Sakashvili, is a man who was educated in the United States of America on a scholarship. Ah, so that's why he so easily massacred hundreds and maybe thousands in South Ossetia. He was trained by the United States Death Squad. He went back to Georgia and with other young people who had also received an education. 
invade in South Ossetia and killed thousands of people. They achieved a revolution. They had democracy, prosperity, and a great little nation. So why did he have to invade South Ossetia and kill all those Russian peacekeepers? And now the Russians are coming in there in an act of aggression. The Russians went in there to stop the slaughter. McCain's lying again. And uh, we have to not only bring about ceasefire, but we have to have honored one of the most fundamental rights of any nation, and that is territorial integrity. We must respect the entire uh, territory of Russia, excuse me, of uh, the Russians Georgia. must respect yeah. the entire territorial integrity of Georgia. Now what he's not saying is that he's siding with the Georgians against the people of South Ossetia who want to secede and stay with Mother Russia or closer to her because they're mainly Russians. So that's why Zakhalishi invaded to kill all those people and try and take that rebel province back. So the truth is it was the rebel province, you know, at odds with Georgia and Georgia invaded and started the killing. And then the Russians stepped in and stopped the killing. And that's the truth. And what you're hearing on TV is a lie. And there's only four million people in Georgia, my friends. I've been there. It's a beautiful little country. They're wonderful people. Oh, they're so wonderful. They should be allowed to invade and take back that rebel province, especially when the whole world is preoccupied with the Olympics. They're suffering, suffering terribly now. And there's two other aspects of this very quickly. One of them, don't think it was an accident that the presence of Lithuania, the presidents, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Poland, and Ukraine flew to Tbilisi to show their solidarity. To show their solidarity with the guy who started the killing. With the president of Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, because they all have something in common with Georgia. They lived under Russian domination for a long period of time. Second of all, of course, it's about energy. There's an oil pipeline that goes across Georgia that up till now had not been controlled by the Russians and my friend energy the Russians are using as a tremendous lever against the Europeans. So keep them in your prayers. Let's get the humanitarian aid as quickly as possible to them and send the message to the Russians that this behavior is not acceptable in the 21st century. Excuse me, but America trained and financed the guy who started the killing, and it's your behavior that's unacceptable. I agree with what Russia did when they stepped in to stop the killing, and the killing has stopped. Again, it's your behavior that's irresponsible and evil.